Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Finger End Order video. Not too long after the last one, because I actually have added something new for New Year's that was not on the JP side of the game. So I'm going to kind of go over everything that's coming for the lead up to New Year's and on New Year's. I hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like. It helps the channel a whole bunch. You guys have been very good with it, and I thank you a whole bunch. It makes me very happy. It makes me very motivated to keep on doing Finger End Order stuff. Comment down below if you have anything that you want to talk about or mention about what any of the things I talk about and you can subscribe to me if you want some more video stuff. So let's get into it. So first, so here's something that is completely different, the hunting quest revivals in the US. So if we actually look back here, um, this event did not exist at all on the JP side of the game. This event is brand new to us. <laughs> It's never happened before where we got an event that JP didn't. Now, it's a small event, I grant you, but the hunting quests can be pretty good depending on what they choose, so let's get into it. So if you don't know, this is basically a revival. So for this first one, it was a centaur hunt quest, which is from Hunting Quest Part 3. It is a redux of a bunch of old hunting quests. It's basically being revived. Um, the next hunting quest, which will be on the 28th, which should be at reset, depending on when you watch this video, and then will be from uh, part 4, this one will be part 3, and this one will be part 2. Now which one it could be is going to be hard to kind of imagine, but we can at least look and see what we had here for part 4. So part 4 we have bones, we have snake eyes, we have wine and dragon teeth, and we have claws and magatamas I think of what they're called. Yeah, magatamas. And leeks and dragon stuff, and clockwork. I think it's pretty obvious for most people. I think it's obviously going to depend on what you kind of want to grind. But most people would probably want bones and then followed up with clocks. And then following up with that would probably be dragon fangs. But I personally don't like it when there's two things I can drop for a stage unless the drop rates are pretty good. And usually for hunting quests, the drop rates is not amazing. It's fine. It's better than what you would think. And you actually get a lot of EXP for doing it as well. But it's not like the greatest thing in the world unless it's specifically a thing that you need to grind for. So let's look at part three. So if that one, assuming bones, I forgot that it's literally, I think there's a bones in every single one of them. <laughs> but let's see if there's anything better than bones here. Got dragon heart and dragon fangs. Primordial lengua and seed of Aegisol. Scarable wisdom and mystic spinal fluid. Gallstone and deadly poison needle. Hmm. Hmm, a lot of people need hearts, so I wouldn't be surprised if this next one was bones and this one is the dragon fangs and hearts. Kill two birds with one stone on that one. And let's look at the last one here. Let's see, we've got bones. Dragon fangs just by themselves. Hmm. Op Oculent crystals. Black beast grease. Great night metal. Ooh. I think this last one will actually be hearts. So let's see. I would guess <laughs> bones is next. This one might be bones. So let's go with... If I were to guess and I was making this, I would probably make this... This one, the dragon fang one. So it's dragon fang with wine. Followed by bones and ending with demon hearts. But we'll see. I'm not sure if this one was the best part three. It wasn't. It wasn't the best because it's number three. So we'll see how they kind of go for it. It's cool that they are doing some stuff that is exclusive to NA. Hope they keep up with it. Um, we usually have campaigns such as the Christmas um, holiday can calendar thingy, um, which Japan does not get, but we do get. So that's cool. And this thing right here is another new thing. And I think it's only a matter of time before maybe we... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, maybe five years from now, we get our own special story events, too. Maybe North America is where Quetz gets to come back. Let's hope, huh? But besides that, we got some of the basics here. The event revival for Benny Enma is coming. So that's cool. I really like Benny Enma. Its event's actually pretty relaxing, from what I remember. You just gotta have to follow up on the tribute point stuff, and you'll be fine. Uh, for the summoning campaign, we got Benny Enma. She, um, for the challenge quest, fun, uh, for, um, 
for event bonuses. Yang is an event bonus, so if you already summoned for Minianma and you got her, you weren't able to get her, you're basically free to go for Yang, and she will help out in the event. Unfortunately, Yang's banner does not have the CEs for this event, but it's fine um, for the most part, I think. Yeah, you're fine here. Just a bunch of old ones. Ooh, but this Musashi one's still pretty good. Is it, is it actually, is it old ones? I don't know if some of these are old ones. This one must be new. Let's find out, huh? Let me go... I can go here. And we can find out. Some campaign? Yeah, so the Musashi cleared... Oh, so... You actually will have a harder chance of getting all of the new CEs for this one. But at least these CEs seem to give a bonus of some kind, which is nice. Let me go back here. Nope, I need to go to main info, event bonuses, event cards. So yeah, these will help out. So you can actually go for Yang and feel pretty happy about it, and that's good. I think that's very smart of them to do. So if you definitely need more stuff for grinding, it's a good fallback for Yang. And in terms of Yang banner, um, in terms of Yang herself, I actually don't see many people talk about Yang at any point. Um, but she is very cute. Let's actually see what Yang does. Grant self-invincibility for one turn, charges on MP gauge for a 10% every turn for three turns. Green crit stars, 500% chance to draw attention of all male enemies to self by 300% for one turn. 15 stars at level 10, now when it gets buffed. Grant self invincibility for one turn, charges on NP gauge by 10% every turn for three turns, gain crit stars, 500% chance of drawing attention of all enemies, not just men, that's good, because I was actually going to say, this is actively kind of useless if you're fighting any females, but they buffed how many stars you get and they changed that, so that's good, it's a pretty good buff. Absorb all enemies MP gauge by 1, the amount of MP chain by all enemies equal to the amount of MP charged by the skill user, reduce their defense for 3 turns. Okay, MP absorb is 20%, the amount of MP drain of the enemies equal to the amount of MP, okay, yeah. 20% defense reduction at level 10. Grant self living flame buff for 3 attacks, 3 turns, living flame reduces the enemy defense by 10% for 3 turns when taking attack by them. If it's burned for 3 turns and the enemy when taking attack by them, increase own defense by 3 turns. Burn damage is 1,000, defense is 20% increase. Hmm. Hmm. Passive skills are Existence Outside of the Domain and Divinity B. And our Noble Phantasm is deals damage to one enemy. Oof. Okay. Inflict burn for three turns on them. Uh... It deals extra damage to enemies with the burn debuff. Okay, that's good. 150%. I was about to say, I don't know if there's a lot of units that actually benefit from hurting people burn, but she's literally one of them. So that's good. Her being arts is going to be nice when Castoria comes out, if you're someone who is planning to eventually run arts down the line. But the funny thing is, is this second skill is actually pretty good. I like the NP absorption, especially if you're fighting a lot of enemies. But if you're only fighting one, it's 20%. But if you're fighting three, you should get 60%, right? I think that makes sense to me. The amount of NP drained of the enemy is equal to the amount of NP charged by the skill user. I think that's how that works. So it kind of varies. Uh, I think she looks pretty solid and she's also very cute. So feel free to get her if you are interested in her. Listen, let me tell you, if you're planning to summon for gang, no, nothing I say would actually matter. You already know in your heart's heart whether or not you're going for Yang. <laughs> in terms of the other units on Raid Up, we have uh, Shiki Saber, which my personal opinion is that there's no reason for you to have Shiki, Shiki Saber. But if you're a big fan of her series, then this is a great chance for you to get her. Gilgamesh. Everyone loves Gilgamesh but me, so perfect time to get him. Skahawk. She's going to get her own fest down the line, so if you want to save a little bit and not and go focus more on Yang, you definitely can. So you don't have to worry about her not coming back for like three years or something. <laughs> Quin Shin Huang. Uh, pretty good for event battles. Um, challenge quests, basically. Uh, BB Summer, I really like BB, and she only gets better with time, so definitely worth going for, especially because she's a summer unit and not a lot of them get kind of rated up a lot. 
Uh, Kiara, I think it kind of varies person by person how well you think Kiara does. She is definitely an AoE arts unit, so if you want to eventually tr make the transition to arts, she can be useful for that. But there are better arts AoE units, including the fact that we get a summer Kiara who is better than this Kiara in every single way. So something to kind of keep in mind. But still, pretty solid unit. This is a good uh, list of units who are good, slash are fan favorites of some kind. So here's the rate updates. This is going to be on day one. Next day, 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 next day. All the way until the 14th. They're basically continuously <laughs> rotating. So this is also something good to keep in mind. You'll basically only have three shots a gang. So keep that in mind while you're either preparing the summon or not getting the summon. The Lucky Bag summoning is coming with the New Year's. I did a video on that if you want to check it out, where it's a lot more in-depth. But basically, all you need to know, GSSR, broken down by class, and it's also paid. So if you are free to play, there's no way for you to summon on this. Here's some of the main info, the login bonus. Normal login bonus is you get one of these rare prisms. Two Corona Full and a Grail on the third day. A New Year's Day login bonus, 30 quarts, very nice, thank you. The comeback login bonus, pretty good, decent. I think you get, what, 60 sounds? Let me see, actually, before I randomly declare it's 60. Okay, so 10, 20, 25, I think it's more closer, around 55 stones, not bad. Limited time campaigns, two times great suck. Great and super suck, pretty nice. One half a campaign AP. Limited master missions, clear Solomon chapter one, clear Anastasia, clear Gothersman, clear Sin, clear Yugas, clear Atlantis, and that's all five quarts there. Da Vinci's workshop, trade limit, great bag, just pay one, just, <laughs> just pay the 22 mana prisms, it's worth it, I swear. Uh, these little dudes. Well, I like the crafty XP. I like the art of it more than I actually like the card itself. Um, but you'll also get 10 tickets in here, so pretty good to pick up. And if you did not own, you can get this New Year's Greetings with 3 Mana Prisms, as well as an old Mystic Code for 5 Mana Prisms. Start Dash Campaign, which is for, I believe, new players. Very good. Very nice. I think this is the change. I think, yes. So... Yeah, that's a lot of quartz. You're getting more quartz than you would normally get <laughs> playing for Go, I'd say. It's kind of crazy. Okay. Next. That's basically what's coming New Year's. But before New Year's, there's actually a countdown. And this is a pretty simple countdown. Log in. Get some golden apples. On the third day, get a golden apple and a ticket. Reduced AP cost campaigns. Pretty nice. Commemorative craft essences. The Manga Adaption Project. These are all, I think you just get them by going to the Caldea Gate and fighting stuff, so don't worry about it. Pretty nice art. I like them. They're based off of the... Um... EORs, I think. Epic Sub Remnants. And CCC, which is basically a, a Epic of Remnant that was made into an event for some stupid reason. <laughs> for some reason I've never fully understood. This is the actual fight, I believe. Go back here. And yeah, that is basically oops. I went too far. Yeah, and it's basically everything coming for New Year's. It's uh pretty good stuff, I'd say. It's nice though, again, like I said beforehand, that we we're getting some stuff that JP did not get. That makes me a little bit more hopeful than on some of the dead weeks that we are going to have, because let me tell you, there's a lot of dead weeks in this year of our Lord 2020. I don't need banners, I just need like stuff to do in the meantime. <laughs> So maybe the return of some more hunting quests on months where it's extremely lean, where it's extremely lean, would be nice. But hey, let's wait and see what happens, huh? That's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Um, if you did, feel free to leave a like, comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, have a good day, have a good night, and goodbye.